I'm so thrilled today to get to talk with Jackie Benson. Yay. I got turned on to this lady during COVID. She'd be set up in her bedroom, jam. I think it was your bedroom. Yeah, right? I think it was. it was. Totally jamming every single day. Every day. Every For day. For 50 days in a row. 50 days in a row. Yes. That's crazy. And that then, crazy. The, and, and I think you were famous before that. But I, man, you like. The word famous has changed meanings. Oh, well. Tell us what brought you here to the Petaluma Music Festival, because we were just talking about that and live up, about kids in school. Oh, yeah. The good stuff. <laughs> well, uh, I'm pretty sure I got here because I had an agent book me here. And uh, <laughs> that's, I'm just saying that's that's okay. the difference between having an agent and not having an agent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are like, you got to come to this festival. It's like a lot of these festivals, they, they only want the most professional thing. And the most professional thing is to have representation in that area, you know. Agency, so you had that. And, and I had that for the first time in my career, and I think that's why, I, that's why I'm here. Awesome. And you're celebrating kids and music. I am celebrating kids and music. It's so important. Yes. People are wondering why there's so much violence in the schools these days. So, well, it's like, what do these kids have to live for? Especially when they're going on Zoom. It's and like you guys, you guys are going to defund music for 30 years, and you're going to wonder why these kids are getting violent. Okay. So we are creating the funds at the Petaluma Music Festival yes. by bringing in the most fabulous musicians. There we go, yes. So what got you started playing music? My Who parents. Okay. My parents got me started playing music and uh, they, my mom was not a musician but loves music and my dad is a musician and does it professionally. And so I always had the example of my dad, you know, he led a band, he played gigs and, and uh, my mom always supported him. And so she just signed me up for music and we just, I just fell in love with it. You got your mom's smile. I do. Yeah. We look almost exactly alike when we smile. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, beautiful <laughs> smile. Thanks. Okay, so dad was the inspiration. Does he play the guitar? Or? He plays the bass and he sings and he leads a band and did for like 40 years for, that was how he brought home his, you know, contribution to the family. He played gigs. Okay. You know. And so now you're out playing gigs. Yes, I am. So you write your own stuff. I do. You play just incredibly whether it's on stage with one other band person yes rodney and and then it, or in your bedroom yes alone totally with the robot right. you always saw me during the pandemic no rodney there no. were my, there might have been a few times where i had a special edition with rodney but uh i think you ma mainly only saw me with rodney so who inspired you besides dad Oh, well, like in the in the world like which Do artists you yeah uh, my earliest inspiration were disney movies some of the best music on earth. It really is. Uh, go figure. I mean, like, The Lion King? Oh, yeah. I was four years old, and I was just like, that opening scene? Can you imagine seeing that for the first time ever? Like, mm -hmm. there are, it's been out for 30 years, 20 years, 30 years. So, a lot of people have seen it, so it's different. But imagine seeing it when it first came out, period. Mm -hmm. And then also, you are four years old. And you were born with a brain of a musician. You know, my dad gave me a music brain. So I'm a musician. I don't even know I'm a musician yet. And you're just going. And it's like, yeah. Nice and I'm like, it's like, it's the circle of life. I mean, I'm like, I couldn't believe it. The songwriting, Elton John, and then Ladysmith Black Mombazo, and then Hans Zimmer. And that was just one Disney and movie. what's not to love. That was just one Disney movie. So you're Did you ever hear the music of Tarzan? Yes. Phil Collins. You know, that's just kind of crazy because I never really thought of that. I don't have this that. It's the best music, music in the world. I just love it is now that you're mentioning it. And it's positive because <laughs> it's made for kids. Yep. So like it was always happy, it made me feel good. The lyrics were clever. They have the best writers on the planet because it's Disney and they have more money than God. <laughs> and they always have. And uh, it's carte blanche. If they want to do a jazz movie, yeah, they're getting John Batiste. Here you go. Yeah. Name your price, buddy. We don't care. We literally don't care. Just write it down on this piece and of paper. And it's going to influence some little kid that's going to go and become... Just like me. So, just like you. Yes. So, so my earliest influence is Disney, for sure. The arranging, yeah. the arranging, the arranging, the instrument choice. You know, noticing that Phil Collins was like a, was like a rock. Tarzan was like a rock um, album with like a lot of drums, right? Um, Li the Lion King was more of like this African influence with a lot of vocals. It really heavily depended on like so much like choir harmonies and also like drum circle type drums. But then like Aristocats is bebop jazz. Yes. But then like, but then like Moana is like pop, 
right? But then like, mm, this is another favorite one of mine. All right, no, Pixar Up. Oh. Up is yes. like, like piano, piano like jazz. And then Toy Story is like Ran Randy Newman. You got a friend of me? Oh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba Toy Story, because my kids were there. Yes. I love it that you that, mentioned that. It's I never so thought good. It's, it's, the, it's the best musicians, carte blanche. It's Elton John. We might just even hear you on one of them someday. Oh my God, huh? if I could write a dis if I could write music for Disney. I think Disney, I are you listening? Actually, okay, look, check it out, Disney. Uh, don't hire me to write one of your movies because I'm just going to quit after that. Like, there's nowhere to go after that. <laughs> it's over. Okay, wait a few years. You're going to end my career because I, it, that'll be the mountaintop. So just uh, wait until I'm like mm, 50, 50 or 60 and ready to retire. Wait, but wait a minute. We've got these guys still playing until they're 70s I need like a 20-year break, dude. Okay, there, there we go. Be, <laughs> this shit is hard. I need a 20-year break somewhere there, and I was going to wait till towards the end of my life. So, like, maybe like 65, Disney, I'll write a movie for you. Keep that there, in mind, Disney. Said here first. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so cool. Okay, tell us a story. When, what, your first time on stage? First time your on stage. first musician that just blew your mind you were on stage with something oh, really well the first time on stage was was piano recitals when i was a kid oh. <laughs> i did like two piano recitals <laughs> a year and they were really nerve-wracking and one of them i got so scared that i stopped playing the song and i just cried at the piano in front of everybody <laughs> Okay, so, so this vulnerability she's got going right here and the big smile afterwards and she's still coming back. Can you picture Work that? Work through just that. Imagine like Some a, a nine-year-old girl. Just like, Aww. I like started to play the song and it was like, da 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 And then I messed up. And then I'd be like, da 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 And then I messed up again. And then I couldn't figure out how to get through the mess up. And then I forgot the rest of the song because I was so nervous. And then I was in front of all these people and it was just silent in a church. And then oh. I just started crying in front of everybody. That is hilarious. Just think about that objectively. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up there like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, hilarious wasn't and, uh, where I was going with that, but I, I, I can see your point. It's funny. It and is, then all these adults, because here's the thing, it's just a piano recital. It doesn't matter. Like, it's okay. These, these parents are supportive. Like, why am I crying? It's really funny. Okay, so kids, really that funny. happens to you, I or adults in front of for that matter, just, just, cry and, cry and get out. through it i mean i don't see anybody in the audience up there at the on the stage it's like yeah i'm crying in front of you you're not crying in front of me i'm doing it i'm the one doing it you are the doing okay so now tell us a story when you didn't cry and you just belted it out okay the first time i ever sang i was 16 i sang in front of people for the first time ever at this talent show at my high school and everybody loved it <laughs> that is so cool everybody loved it but here's the thing i wasn't popular afterwards the next day, it was like everyone just wanted to pretend like it didn't happen. I'm serious, like the night of, I everyone was you, like, but Wah! that's like exactly the opposite no, of the, the night of. The night of, everybody was like, wow, because I had my dad's band back me up. I like pulled out like an ace in the hole, and I had my dad's professional gigs four times a week band back me up at a high school talent show. Can you imagine? Uh huh. So this band was. Pro. My dad actually ended up getting hired for a wedding gig from that talent show oh, sure. by one of the parents. <laughs> I'm so serious. So my dad is like totally pro and I'm like 16 singing my first song in front of people ever. They freaked out. They cheered so loud. They freaked out at the band. The saxophone player did a solo. They freaked out. They told me all the kids and the parents told me like even like the popular kids that never talked to me told me how great it was after the show. But then the next day, you were too cool. Normal day at high school. <laughs> Nobody talked to me or looked at me or said, great job last night. And then, like, nobody ever talked about it ever again. That is insane. I, I think, I think it was too good. I agree. I think they were, like, scared of me after that. I definitely was, ooh, You know, no one, like, no one messed cool. with me. I mean, I never was really bullied, but people just kind of stayed out of my way after that. They were like, here I come. They just, they just stayed out of my way after that, all the way until I graduated. And so you, and that's the only thing that changed. Everyone just left, left me alone. But you know what? I liked that. Mm -hmm. I liked being left alone. I liked choosing to talk to who I wanted to talk to instead of having to be like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a nerd. <laughs> She's not a nerd at all. Oh, I'm a huge nerd, but I'm a cool nerd. Okay. You know what? I like that because yeah, <laughs> nerds of the world unite. Because I use that sampler, the robot. That is the nerdiest stuff ever.
It is so cool. It's like what that, that you were calling it. The, the it's the robot. The, the robot. The robot. The yes. robot. I captured the souls of my players in this robot. I had this amazing drummer. What's the name of your drummer? Rodney Hyder. Rodney Hyder. By the way, you want to hear something crazy? Yes. Rodney Hyder drummed in my dad's band for 25 years before my dad retired and then I hired him. So Rodney was the drummer of the band at the high school talent show. I said I hired my dad's band. Rodney was in my dad's band for 25 years before I hired him. My dad retired because my dad's almost 80. <laughs> so he's just chilling because he freaking like, earned ahead, it. Kid, he freaking ahead. earned it, by the way. He's chilling. This is not an easy job for an 80-year-old to do. That's all I got to say. Yeah. And, um, and so Rodney, but Rodney's 25 years younger than my dad. And so uh, he is gigging with me now. He's like the family drummer. But That's he was literally the drummer that night in high school when I sang in front of everybody for the first time. Keeping it in the family. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's really crazy. Okay, so what would you say to somebody that said, you know, God, she's so cool. I want to be like you. Uh, be yourself. Okay. To be like, to be like me, I guess, right, is right. to not be like me at all. Okay. And to just fiercely be yourself only. And always be yourself. Never turn it off for anybody or anything. And if you have to turn it off, then just get out of there. Like if you're in a place where you have to like not be yourself, leave that place. Just like fiercely and like strongly and like aggressively be yourself. Um, so you're gonna be nothing like me because I can only be myself. Okay. So to be like me, you have to be nothing like me and be aggressively like yourself. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So do I get to share you with the world? Yeah. And share this good stuff. I hope it sounds good. I think it sounds good. I think so. This is what's so cool about doing these is that it's on it the spot. It always turns out all right. And it's evergreen because you're telling this story that people can relate to. It never stops. It's like, what do you mean you're not the cool kid in school after I this was. Anymore? Oh, my God. You guys, I was never the cool girl. Actually, in, in middle school, I was a horse girl. A horse girl. I was a horse girl. Hor I was horses. Here's the thing. And you get to find the out young, you like the young, the, 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 the people younger than me, they know what I mean when I say I was a horse girl. Oh, wait a minute. I think I'm thinking of it differently. Uh -uh. You weren't no, riding like, horses. I was. Oh, okay. And I was like, that was all I cared about. And I was just a horse girl and I wanted a horse and I just, I was a horse girl. I, I had, had a, a pony low ponytail. I did not have a pony, but I leased a horse. <laughs> like you lease a car. I leased a horse. And uh, it was awesome, and I didn't have any friends, and I didn't care because my horse was my best horse. friend. A girl I and was her a, horse. I was a horse girl, you guys. Low ponytail, jeans, t-shirt, everything. Everything. Uh, this is the good stuff. Helmet, helmet hair, constant. <laughs> helmet hair for this constant one. Oh, hair. yeah. Constant helmet hair. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's oh, how, oh, wait. And on that note. No, 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 no. On that note, how can we follow you? Oh, Jackie Vincent on Google. Google Jackie Vincent and pick your platform. Whatever okay. you use, search me on that platform. And you can find, she's going all over the place. She's on tour now. You're probably going to find me just like accidentally. You'll be like walking downtown and then I'll just be playing like a Levitt amphitheater or something. And you'll probably just find me because that's how, that's how the world works these days. 